What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earth Master here on this Monday, March 28th, 2022, about 6.33 p.m. California time. Latest quake on the Earthquake 3D globe shows a 2.8 earthquake into the area of uh, Texas. Still seeing quite a bit of swarming out there in the Texas region, right around the Pecos, Texas area, Guadalupe Peak area. Let's go ahead and check out the latest data here on the USGS map. Still looks a little minimal, right? Not a whole lot of major earthquake movement taking place here tonight. Largest one so far looks like a 5.2 in the New Zealand uh, area, north of the North Island, around the Kermadec Trench. Uh, I'm guessing this is going to change pretty quickly here with this solar activity we're experiencing um, over the last 12 hours or so. I kind of want to jump right into that real quick. So let's go ahead and check out the solar weather activity right off the bat having some major uptick in solar weather um, specifically with this sunspot right here 2975 creating quite the uh, the uh, crackle if you will on the solar flare chart I've seen a couple M flares already these guys reporting an M 4.0 and an M 2.2 but Looking at this chart here, I kind of want to show you guys. Here is the M level, right, in this little line. These are uh, a little bit stronger flares in the uh, M4.0 uh, level. A little bit smaller one here within the last 30 minutes. But look at this crackle. Crackle is like consistent background level. And we're getting pretty much upper C flares, lower M flares for just crackling. And that kind of uh, kind of points towards... A possibility of seeing something major pop off here with this sunspot. 10% uh, chance of an X flare. I think that's a little bit higher. Um, I'm guessing probably around a 50-50 chance of seeing an X flare from this uh, sunspot, which is currently directly Earth facing. 2975 right there. Anything that does pop off will only enhance uh, the activity that's already headed our way. We are looking at a G2 class storm coming up here on the 31st. 70% chance of storming at the higher latitudes with 35% chance at the mid latitudes. Um, so look at look at this. Look at the global D-layer absorption map. Quite the uh, radio blackout on the lit side of the sun and around the polar areas from all of this activity. Quite a bit of protons being released out there as well. 99% chance of proton activity. That's kind of why we're seeing the radio blackouts. Uh, this stuff right here can enhance uh, and, and cause some issues upstairs, up in the atmosphere and into space here with the uh, electronics and astronauts and uh, radiation issues. Um, nothing, uh, I guess I shouldn't say anything major, but the, uh, the interference could possibly be there from this uh, activity that's kind of uh, occurring at the moment. Just gotta watch this pretty closely. Um, yeah, they don't. They only have a 35% chance of an imp flare. But look at this level here. I mean, we got crackling at the imp flare. So this has got to be uh, much more higher than the 35% chance here. This is a little off. Sometimes these guys are a little bit slow when it comes to uh, issuing the activity threat level. Uh, current X-ray flux is at M 1.1. This peaked out at a M 2.2 level. Uh, the last one here was a little bit earlier today, an M4.0, but these these levels right here, they're just, I kind of call this crackling because it's almost like consistent um, flaring, if you will. And uh, when we see this, this is a good indicator. See this chart here with the uptick, uh, kind of like an uh, uphill type of uh, setup here. That's That's leading towards possibly an X flare here very soon. And as I mentioned, something uh, of an X-flare sort directed at Earth will definitely enhance the activity already headed our way. G2 storm on the 31st, the detailed forecast. Uh, looks like uh, geomagnetic storming is likely to uh, commence early, 30, uh, early March 31st with the arrival of the Earth-directed component of the 28th of March CME. So that's going to be kind of cool to see uh, what this thing does. The sun's very active at the moment, folks. 
This massive sunspot over here, 2976, is not set up uh, as far as the complexity of it goes. It looks pretty stable in the magnetic fields. The magnetic field map here kind of shows that. Uh, but this one right here has got stuff all over the place when it comes to the complexity of the, um, of the fields here. This here has got two separate ones here. So they're somewhat stable. But, man, imagine if these things grow and happen to... Uh, uh, connect to one another and and possibly create a super mega flare that's uh these are kind of these are pretty close here kind of watching this pretty closely over the last uh, day or so with this new development of 2975 and uh, anything is possible right we just gotta uh, be prepared for that i don't know if we can be prepared when it comes to a super mega flare but uh man crazy activity on the sun currently there is the uh you can see that flaring kicking off here. That's that M2.2 that just kicked off. Very bright flare. Of course, the next flare is going to be much more powerful. Uh, something to watch very closely here, folks. Uh, let's see what the space weather sites are checking out here, or uh, at least mentioning. Spaceweather.com is a pretty cool site. More solar flares, right? There's much more solar flares to come as long as this thing is crackling like it is. Uh, this morning, strong M4 class solar flare. Looks like it was just the beginning. Active sunspot AR2975 continues to flare. Kind of like popcorn, if you will. Uh, since the instigating M4 event, it has produced additional C3, C9, and M1 class explosions. Quite a bit of activity ongoing there. Look at that. Even a uh, solar tsunami, if you will, from that C flare or the... Uh, uh, M flare event earlier, the M4.4. Radio blackouts do happen as well. Uh, I haven't been on CB radio in quite a, a couple of years, actually. I know these flares and the sunspots, they do enhance skip conditions and uh, long distance uh, communications there with the amateur radios. Um, I'm kind of tempted to get on and see if I can uh, uh, hear anything uh, cool, if you will, because it's kind of neat. Uh, listening to uh distant radio but uh man let me see let me go back here real quick here to the space weather site look at that sunspot ar 2975 is crackling with m m class solar flares that's pretty crazy protons up at 6.2 but 99 percent chance According to these folks here, proton uh, activity, X flare at 10%, M flare. Like I said, this has got to be higher. These have got to be higher here. So it's it's got to be uh, much more than what these guys are stating here. And I think once this stuff hits, folks, we need to start paying attention to what's going on here on the uh, plate tectonic side. Uh, last time we had you know a pretty strong G2 event, we seen a pretty large uptick in earthquake activity. And looking at the map here, things are kind of mellow, very mellow in terms of uh, earthquake activity right now. Uh, just a couple scattered out and about, perfectly set up, perfectly spaced earthquake activity here across the western part of the region, including the uh, Java Trench, Philippines area, Indonesia islands, all kind of just showing some fours. Uh, pretty shallow earthquake activity as well. There's a couple deep ones in there, but mostly shallow movement. Uh, there is the activity there in the Kermadec Islands, 44.5 kilometers for 5.2. Uh, movement uh, into the South America region has been somewhat minor. Um, look, looking at a couple fours there. Down here in the South Sandwich Islands as well. A little 5.1, but uh, man, there's really, I tell you what, there's not a whole lot of activity in the earthquake department. Most of this is, most of the news today is solar weather. There's just a lot going on on the sun. And I think that, you know, a lot of people underestimate the potential of uh, some major solar flare activity and the uh, possible havoc it could cause here on planet Earth with our communications. Everything's communication, right? Got multiple computers here on this side. Got a cell phone over here. Uh, on the desk and it's just everything revolves around communication and electronics one interesting note up here is the return of a swarm of activity here in the uh, 
northwestern part of Nevada. We've seen uh, quite a bit of uptick in movement here. Some pretty shallow earthquake activity. This has continued over the last week or so with uh, about a swarm of 31 earthquakes in the Sheldon area. Uh, I was out here and this is kind of north of the region. I was out here a few years ago checking out the uh, checking out an earthquake swarm, but a little bit further south here into the Sheldon National Antelope Refuge, and I'm not for sure exactly where it's at here on the map. Um, I know it's somewhere within this region, but uh, this here, this little area is north uh, of the region I visited a few years ago, and. Um, it's hard to say exactly what's going on out here. There is some uh, fault systems and whatnot. I don't think we got any oil pumping operations. You know, I can't really blame that on the operations here with this activity. Uh, I believe it is plate tectonic activity, and I don't think it's volcanic. I know there's some uh, some ancient volcanic activity out here, but uh, I believe this is just. Uh, some fault systems here taking place, even though we're not seeing the faults here on the map. Uh, definitely some activity kicking up there into the northwestern part of Nevada. Got to watch that pretty closely for sure. It's well inland. It's very shallow. Uh, there's no active volcanoes that I can see around the region. But it's definitely something to watch here pretty closely. Uh, because any swarming activity is uh, definitely noteworthy in my book. Uh, some movement into northern California around the Shingletown area, the eastern, western part of the Sierra Nevada. Um, looks like it's west of the Mount Lassen region. Nothing specific going on at that uh, volcano currently. Just a couple earthquakes there west of there, east of Redding. No further movement to note in the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, a little movement here across the coastal range there in northern California. But overall, look at this, folks. Look at this. Look at this activity. It's just absolutely uh, minimal is the word. And that's kind of scary when it comes to plate tectonics because we know quiet is not really a good thing, right? Some swarming down here in the Salton Sea area. Looks like about 12 earthquakes or so. Most of that early this morning and late last night. Haven't seen too much activity in terms of uh, last few hours, but... Uh, other than that, there's not really a whole lot going on here, folks. Pacific Northwest, uh, microquake activity in the region of Seattle and Mount Rainier. I do want to check out the trimmer map here tonight along the Cascadia subduction zone. Zero once again. Alrighty. Volcanic seismicity map here at uh, Mount St. Helens. Kind of want to go over this real quick since we are kind of watching... Uh, some earthquake activity that has been occurring here and not being reported on the USGS map or the PNSN network. Uh, still some earthquake activity. See these spikes here? They're definitely showing up. Let's see if they're going to let me access the uh, previous day. Definitely some earthquake movement here and uh, some smaller quakes in the mix. Definitely some earthquake activity striking there at Mount St. Helens. Um, and over the last couple hours as well. Nothing major. These are all probably well below the 1.0 range, but still some movement kicking up here at uh, Mount St. Helens. And, uh, you know, looks at uh, looks like they haven't been reporting it, but uh, that's okay. We got you covered. Let's check out Mount Hood, the volcanic seismicity here. There, of course, there was swarming here over the last couple weeks within the southern area of Mount Hood. I do want to check out these folks here for the latest data. Looks like Timberline, Oregon, a uh, three-component broadband station here monitoring the activity, seismic activity here at the uh, volcano. Um, any day now, any day. Yeah, not a whole lot going on here at the uh, Mount Hood region. There's no individualized spike. A little bitty one over here. But uh, overall, it looks a lot quieter than the Mount St. Helens seismograph stations. Yellowstone National Park, as we zoom in here, nothing going on either, folks. Look at that. Pretty quiet movement across Yellowstone. Um, looks like maybe a couple small spikes, little very small earthquakes there at Mount, uh, 
We're at uh, Yellowstone National Park in the northwest corner. But overall, general seismic activity on the mellow side. Earthquakes Canada as well. It's just, it just seems to be the trend tonight. Very quiet conditions in the earthquake department. Got some new activity though here, it looks like, in the uh, Canada region up here by uh, St. John, Fort St. John area, northwest of there. Seeing a uh, 3.7 at five kilometers and it looks like a couple of smaller earthquakes in there as well these are aftershocks from uh, the earthquake activity over the past couple weeks latest quake up here it looks like in Alaska got the purple circle with the 2.0 there in Alaska Cascadia subduction zone down south here looks pretty quiet maybe one what do we got here a little 2.0 near Gold River BC area Subduction zone quake there, 22.3 kilometers deep into that area of the Cascadia. But uh, things kind of things kind of mellow, folks. That's the topic here tonight. That's the the main story. Very quiet global conditions. Yes, we got earthquake activity everywhere, pretty much, right? But far as large scale movement, there's not a whole lot taking place here. Main weather story, well, space weather story is the solar activity and I think that's worthy of watching very closely trends these trends right here on the upward trend here sometimes they give surprises so we need to pay very close attention to this line here the red line uh, indicating the X flare ca uh, class uh, category flare so watching that pretty closely 10% chance of an X flare Click on this and see what we got here. There's that M2.2, but uh, I highly suspect this is going to kick up here really soon following that downtrend with the uh, ongoing activity. Uh, let's see, anything else worthy to note? Uh, I don't think we have too much going on there on the big island. But we will zoom in out here real quick and see what we got. Southeast region of the Big Island of Hawaii. Looks uh, pretty quiet as, there, quiet as well. Southeast region seeing a little bit of movement uh, in the deeper department down here. Very typical. And Mona Loa, a couple small earthquakes up here at the summit region. Very shallow movement. But uh, man, just a, it's a waiting game. Kind of curious to see exactly what's going to happen here uh, with this solar weather activity headed our way and the influx it has on the plate tectonics because I, I'm a firm believer uh, in the movement here on Earth being affected by uh, solar weather and whatnot. I believe it all plays a part. What else we got here, guys? Uh, nothing really major going on, right? This is a good sign when we don't see these things lighting up. The data buoy center. Things looking pretty calm for now across the board. Uh, we do have the live stream up and running, monitoring the uh, solar weather, at least the aurora forecast. Kind of tempted to bring up the uh, x-ray flux, but for now we'll leave it up on the, uh, on the auroras. And you know what? I'm probably going to switch that over. I think we will. Uh, switch that over to the X, uh, X ray flux chart. In the meantime, have a good night, folks. Enjoy your Monday. We will chat you guys a little bit later on. If something major does happen, like an X flare, we will be out here uh, doing an update. Take care, guys. Peace out.